Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. Hey, baby, how you doing? Very good. How are you? You know, I'm good. The weekend is over and we're back to work and it's starting to feel like summer and all of that fun stuff. So it's good. It's it's really good. Uh, coming up, we've got a special guest. For those of you who are into uh, maybe like celebrity gossip kind of stuff, you're going to love this because... We've got a book called Crush, and it's about who was your first celebrity crush. And the, the people that put this together, they reached out to notable people. A lot of them are authors, like Stephen King is one of the people in the book, where they asked, who was your first celebrity crush? And uh, it's going to be kind of fun to chat with them. I thought this was a neat idea for a book. So we've got the book Crush, and we've got that interview coming up. Hey, did you know the word tip? You know, the thing you give at the end of a meal? Yeah. That actually uh, means, originally came from an acronym, to ensure promptness. And it, it was supposed to be given at the beginning of the meal. So when you'd come in, you'd give them a tip to ensure promptness. Now we give it at the end of the meal. It's kind of crazy. Today's a special day. We'll get to all of the fun stuff happening today in a bit. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Monday, June the 6th. Today is D-Day. It is Drive-In Movie Day, National Higher Education Day. It is uh, Leave National Leave the Office Early Day, National Thank God It's Monday Day, and it is also Russian Language Day. It's Atheist Pride Day oh. and Yo-Yo Day. So there you go. A lot of things going on today. And I don't understand the, the Atheist Pride Day. You know, if, if that's something that you don't believe, then don't believe it. But, you know, for me, I, I think it takes more faith to be an atheist than it does to be a Christian. Because think about this. If I'm wrong, nothing happens. But if you're wrong, <laughs> 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 just saying. All right. Might want to celebrate. I, actually, why do they even need a day? All the atheists I've ever met are pretty darn proud to be atheists. It's the first thing. It's, it's like vegans. It they is. tell you over and over and, and remember, over again. I remember an meeting atheist, an, atheist an atheist vegan, and we didn't know what to talk about. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And if that's you, that's cool. Do your thing. I'll do my thing. Going to celebrate my day today, maybe with a yo-yo, because that sounds like kind of fun. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Whether you're an experienced shooter or someone new to self-defense, Front Sight Firearms Training Institute has a course for you. You may recognize Front Sight from their reality TV show filmed at this private range 45 minutes west of Las Vegas. A Diamond Lifetime membership is $15,000, but we have a special price of just $3,000 available now only at radiosavings.com. This lifetime membership allows you to take over 50 courses as often as you'd like at Front Sight Firearms Training Institute. Get this deal right now at radiosavings.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Do you remember what you did on New Year's Eve? Well, one Welsh man does not, and he wants to apologize for that. <laughs> a Welsh accountant walked into a bar. Just kidding. That I mean, He probably did. We'll get to the story. But a Welsh accountant who may have enjoyed himself a little too much on New Year's Eve has taken out a newspaper advertisement to apologize Whoa. to anyone he may have offended with the antics that he can barely remember, starting off with, quote, to whom it may concern, <laughs> Howard Potter's contrite adjective and public apology in the Western Mail went on to beg for forgiveness to the staff of the Cardiff Hotel, also to a man at a fish bar <laughs> and two passing police officers. All of these people, and doubtless many more, were at some time during a long night castigated, vilified, embarrassed, or even worse off, bored for which most humbly and respectfully I apologize. So this guy apparently had one heck of a New Year's Eve. I wish he would have gone into more detail. I know. I kind of want to know what he did. This, honestly? If it's so bad, you have to take out a letter in the <laughs> newspaper? This, That's a story that needs to be told. I'll tell you, this sounds like an idea for a movie, quite honestly. It's almost like The Hangover. But this guy does remember, and he feels awful. You know, the movie The Hangover, they wake up in the next day, and they're trying to figure out, what do we do? What happened? <laughs> this guy remembers what he did, and he takes out an ad in the paper to apologize <laughs> for it. <laughs> I just That's think that, amazing. Well, I think it's, it's very gutsy of him to do that. He's a Welsh accountant, so you know he, he probably is going, hey, I, I'm a professional. I should have acted more professionally. But do you think it was a good idea to draw attention? Now everybody in the world, well, at least you know the the ninety nine percent of the world that listens to this show, uh, everybody in the world now knows about it. When before it was just these four or five people that he, he why wouldn't you have just gone and apologized to them? Maybe he didn't know uh, who they were. There you go. That's probably what I would have done. All I know is you know it's true. 
because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. You ever heard of somebody being charged with a driving under the influence uh, citation sitting in the passenger seat? I have not. Well, you're going to hear one now. Carlisle, Pennsylvania. They pull over a man, and the guy that's in the driver's seat uh, was named Lucas Enbacher. He was eating a gigantic sandwich with both hands. The man in the passenger seat, Derek Pittman, said, Sorry, officer. All the weaving was my fault. I was holding the wheel while he was eating that sandwich. Wow. The officers gave Pittman, that was the passenger, a sobriety test. He failed. His blood alcohol was .237. That's about triple the legal limit there in oh Pennsylvania. Gosh. Pittman, who was in the passenger seat, actually got a driving under the influence charge. And Bacher, who passed the field sobriety test, he was the one eating the sandwich in the driver's seat. He was in the driver's seat and responsible for the vehicle, but he was not charged with the DUI. He should, he have, should gotten have at least gotten something. Distracted, distracted driving. driving. I don't know. Or, you, or you'd something. Think, he was the guy running the, the foot controls. I, I hope. Maybe the other dude well, had his foot over there, too. All I know is that's what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Got our moment of duh, and it's the DMV in California. Imagine that. A 16-year-old boy from California went to get his driver's license, and the DMV in Sacramento said... Sorry, we're going to need uh, some other form of ID. This birth certificate's not going to work. It says that you're a woman. That's when he discovered that somebody erroneously labeled him as female. So he went to get his driver's license. That happened on my driver's license. Remember that? (laughs) Yeah, that's funny. You got my license a few years ago? But but yours wasn't because of a birth certificate. They just made a mistake. His birth certificate certificate. mistakenly called him a female. No, yeah, my driver's license. she She goes, does everything look okay? I said, well... You've got me so, listed as a man. This 16-year-old, the only way he could avoid and, and be able to move forward is to fill out a form saying he had a sex change operation. But wait, there's <gasps> more. His family thought the Department of Health Services, who made the error, could just fix the problem on the certificate. Once again, despite the obvious physical evidence, they said, we can't change a birth certificate. We could attach an amendment to it wow. that says that now he's a male. So his choices are either to be A, listed as a female, B, be listed as someone who had a sex change, all because somebody made a mistake 16 years ago. So I'm not sure which one of those is the right choice, but hopefully he gets that all ironed out. Coming up, we've got your Scoop of the Day. That is on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your Scoop of the Day. A British couple has married, finally, after dating for, I don't know, 40 years. Whoa! <laughs> 84-year-old... No sense rushing yeah, into anything. 84-year-old Colin Dunn and 82-year-old bride Sally Smith first met in 1972 when she worked behind a bar at a social club. He visited every week after work. Uh, and Every weekend, rather, after work. Now, 44 years later, they finally took the plunge and got married. They've been dating for 44 years. That's crazy. Uh, this I've got a link on our Facebook page here. Uh, want want to live like the Tanners in the full house? You can. 1709 Broderick Street in San Francisco, home to the famous exterior shot, at least, of the Tanner House from Full House, is up for sale. Now, you were the one that pointed this out to me, weren't you? Yes. Uh, it's not cheap. $4.15 million. That's ridiculous. So I have a link if you want to you know, buy a house and move to San Francisco. That is ridiculous. And for that tiny... Yeah, a little row house. It's nothing special. No way. Special. Uh, but it's famous, so there you go. You'd, you'd be in the Full House house, 1709 Broderick Street. Uh, everybody should send letters to them. <laughs> I mean, we know the address. <laughs> send it to the Tanners. <laughs> wow. All right. If you'd like to know more about that, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. As the valedictorian at Amite High School in Amite City, Louisiana, Andrew Jones was pre- prepared to give reflection, prayer, and tell his classmates uh, to turn their tassels. However, none of that happened. When he arrived at the graduation center Wednesday, he was stopped at the gate. His beard, school administrators told him, violated the district's dress code. He had to sit in the stands and watch his friends and co- and cousins graduate. He couldn't because he had a beard. Oh. And he, he was the valedictorian, by the way. Oh. So it's not like this is a kid that was, you know, in trouble. He was a good kid. But they said, no, you grew a beard, so in the stands you go. 
So I didn't know they could tell you you can and can't grow facial hair. but Apparently. Apparently you can. Shia LaBeouf. Now, I think it's really funny. Our kids really like Shia LaBeouf. I am not a fan. <laughs> it's, that's why I think he's it's so funny. He's extremely overrated. He, he, well, he's just really bizarre. And the story <laughs> I'm going to tell you really clues you in on that. Uh, I first met Shia LaBeouf through movies in the movie Holes, which is a great movie. It's a Disney movie. And it's, he was really good in that movie. It was a neat movie. But then he was in the, the very last episode of Indiana Jones, and it was terrible. It was awful. I was so excited, too. My son, our son, he's your son, too. He was excited because he's like, oh, Shia LaBeouf. And we, we went and watched it, and I was like, so what'd you think? He's like, yeah, that wasn't so good. And he was in the Transformers movie. So if you don't know who we're talking about yet, he was also uh, in a, a movie, Fury. Uh, he was the, the pastor, the preacher in Fury. Anyway, Shia LaBeouf. Famous dude, a lot of people, especially younger gen- generations, really, really like this guy, and he's currently hitchhiking across the United States, and he's getting rides from fans. He's doing this for a oh, month. I saw this. I actually saw this. LaBeouf's adventures include him tweeting out the GPS coordinates of his location. From there, fans can pick him up and his team, and they can take them on a journey of their choosing and then drop him off somewhere. I think that's really cool that he's that doing that. That is pretty cool. And, you know, again, I, I already admitted I'm not a huge Shia LaBeouf fan, but I might go see where he is. If he's in the neighborhood, I'd give him a ride. But then again, I give other strangers rides, too. You do. So. You always pick up strangers. <laughs> I got one last story here. You know what? I'm going to actually save that one. We're going to get to this one over here. According to the Obsessive Compulsive Foundation, an estimated 700,000 to 1.4 million people in the United States are believed to have compulsive hoarding syndrome. It is a subcondition of obsessive compulsive disorder, a condition where a person saves and piles up almost anything, even though it has no value whatsoever. Why are you pointing at me? Uh (laughs) She says I'm a hoarder. You are a hoarder. It's terrible. I don't think I'm a hoarder. I just have collections of stuff that are better over the years. I'm probably a hoarder. But yeah, we're moving soon, and there's a lot of things that aren't making that trip, and I don't care if you like it or not. Well, it's just the way it's going to be. I've gotten really good at going through and saying, do I need this? Nah, I probably don't need this. And then the sad thing is, a week later, I'm like, dang, I did need that. (laughs) (laughs) Right. All right. has never happened once. That's going to do it for your Scoop of the Day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This has been quite an election so far, and we've got a long ways to go. Stay informed at politicalstorm.com. It's a cool site with political news and information on the campaigns, plus a place to chime in and have a say in what you think. If you're into politics, you need to check out politicalstorm.com. Get informed from several different sources all in one place. Listen to podcasts like mine and learn about current election topics, read fun editorials, and engage your brain. It's your country. It's your vote. It's your voice. Politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. I'm excited to chat with my next guest. I've got a copy of her book in my hand here. It's called Crush. And Kathy Alter and Dave Singleton put this book together, and we've got Kathy joining us right now. Kathy, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing over there? Very good. I'm looking at this, and I like on the back, it says, You Never Forget Your First Crush, but this is a star-studded collection of essays, and, and there's a lot of different people involved in this book. How in the world did you guys go about putting this together? <laughs> wow, we were really lucky because we thought the same thing. Uh, we, you know, we started by talking about our first celebrity crushes. So mine was Donny Osmond and Dave's was David Cassidy. And then we started thinking, um, gee, who else had good celebrity crushes? And what writers would we like to hear from? So we put together a wish list of, I mean, we just went wild with it. You know, from Tina Fey to um, Joan Didion, Susan Orlean, like everyone we loved. And we just started reaching out. And some we did not know at all. And we went through agents and Facebook and tweeted at them. And others we knew through people or someone knew someone who knew somebody. And as writers in the Washington, D.C. area, there are a lot of writers in this area who we know and who we just sort of would meet out at parties. And we would just, I would, I mean, just approach them and say, um, would you do an essay for me? And it was so surprising that they said yes. You know, because I think this this topic really, really, um, they just responded to it very easily. And the essays they turned in needed very little work. They were just perfect. That is really, really cool. And the book is called Crush. And I'm looking at some of the names on here, Stephen King and James Franco. And these are these are huge names. So that is absolutely awesome 
they got some of these people to, to be a part of this. Yeah, I mean, I so I have, if you can believe it, I'm like two degrees uh, separation from James Franco. Uh, my literary hero is David Shields. And mm. James Franco had, had uh, optioned one of his books, and they were making a movie together. And I said to David Shields, gee, I wonder who his crush is. And he said, well, you know, I'll ask him if he'd like to contribute. And the very next day, I had an email from James Franco, which I thought was a virus, of course, because why would James Franco be emailing me? <laughs> but it wasn't. When I opened it up, it was, it was, you know, essays and collages and poetry all to River Phoenix. It was amazing. That is awesome. And uh, again, the book is called Crush, and it says, Writers reflect on love, longing, and the lasting powers of their first celebrity crush. Now, were there any of these, when you reached out to people, were there any that you got back that you were just absolutely stunned when you found out who their crush was? You know, nothing stunned me, (laughs) because I was prepared, because writers are so sort of cerebral, and we knew that they would take the idea and not just talk about romantic crushes. So what really surprised me, two things surprised me. One was that... um, some of the men wrote about comic book characters or video <laughs> game characters. That's us. We're that weird. That was surprising. Um, but they, they made sense. You know, when I read the essay, it made total sense. And the other thing that really surprised me was we expected a lot of people who wanted to write about, you know, Donny Osmond or George Clooney or whoever. And what I didn't expect was two very, very different writers wrote about a character from Laura Ingalls Wilder's Little House on the Prairie. Oh, wow. They each wrote essays on Almanzo Wilder, which seems a very surprising, <laughs> a very surprising crush to me. And that two two very different writers would do their essays on, on that fictional character, um, although he's based on real life, that was surprising. And those essays are among my favorites. They're really good. Well, and as you flip through the book, one of the things that really jumps out is there's a like a cartoon in the middle here. Uh, and this is the crush for John Lennon. And I just thought yeah. that was that was really cool that, you know, like I said, as you flip through the book, it just jumps out. And as you look through that, it's just fascinating. It, the person that did this, are they the one that, that had the crush? Are they are also the artist on this? That's Yeah, that's her that's her thing. Janice Shapiro is amazing, and she is working on a graphic memoir called Crushable, all about her celebrity crushes. And I had heard about this a while ago, and then, again, two separate writers from different parts of the country both reached out to me and said, have you thought about including Janice in your book? And I think that graphic novels, graphic memoirs, are a really exciting new form of of writing. And I really wanted that represented in our book. So I reached out to her and I asked her if she would do something original for us, and she did. And she she was so fun to work with because it's a different medium for me. I mean, I, I can barely draw, you know, a stick figure. <laughs> so working through that with her, and then we got to meet her when we went out to L.A. and did a reading. And she's just, she's just so soulful and down to earth and cool like she's just a cool person so part of the excitement was getting to meet a lot of the writers when we've been doing our events you know it's to me writers are my idols now so it's just been a total thrill i feel like a teeny bopper I'm so excited. again visiting with kathy alter today she is the uh, author co-author i should say of the book crush uh we don't want to forget dave now how do you and dave know each other have you worked together before we haven't well we've we Sort of. <laughs> we were co-workers at a super boring place in Washington, D.C., where, you know, we were basically pencil pushers. And we had lunch, and we realized we were both writers, and we were both working on books, and we both got along great. And so we've been friends for about 15 years, and when I had a baby and was feeling stir crazy, Dave kidnapped me, and we went on a long drive, and I said, let's collaborate on something, because I just, you know, I missed hanging out with him. And he said, I have an idea, and the idea was Crush. So um, it just really was it was a dream come true, working on such an exciting project and getting to work with one of my best friends. That's awesome. Now, you had some amazing contributors, but i I got to ask, were there any people that you reached out to that you really wanted to have in the book that just weren't able to make it in? Yes. Well, there were a few, but my big heartbreak was not getting Molly Ringwald because I think she's an amazing writer, and we have Andrew McCarthy, and so I had the idea to put the Brat Pack back together. Yeah. You know, we get her and Rob Lowe, and, um, and she was so nice. She um, and I emailed, and I was really, you know, I was buttering her up good, 
and she really wanted to do it, but she had her own project that she was working on, and we just couldn't make it work. But I have to say, even the no's we received were so nice and so considerate, (laughs) you know. They were nice no's. You know, the no's were like yeses to me. (laughs) A nice no is kind of like a yes. (laughs) Well, again, Kathy Alter is our guest today. The book is called Crush. Writers reflect on love, longing, and the lasting power of their first celebrity crush. Kathy, where can we find a copy of this book? You can find a copy of this book on Amazon, on Barnes & Noble, Books A Million. In your bookstores, you can go to the HarperCollins website and order through them. They'll send you to Barnes & Noble and Amazon. Um, Everywhere that books are sold. Well, very good. It's a great book. It's a really fun book. Uh, the, one of my favorite things about a book is when I can sit down and read a chapter in one sitting and not have to, you know, try to remember what I was reading. And that's what this book is because it's broken up in such a way that each chapter is, you know, some are as short as a half a page and some are a couple of pages. But to me, that's my favorite kind of reading because I can do it almost any time and squeeze it in almost anywhere. So I love right. that about this book. Read in order. I mean, you could read by the author you're interested in reading, you know, James Franco, or you could read by section. Yeah. I'm curious to know, John, who who is your celebrity crush? Who was my celebrity crush? Well, I, I think one of them is somebody you mentioned, Molly Ringwald. When you mentioned, you know, I, I remember as a kid, I always thought that she was pretty foxy. And my wife and I, we kind of joke about that because she doesn't look anything like Molly Ringwald. And I don't look anything like her crush. So I don't know. She, she always liked Michael J. Fox. And she had posters of him on the wall. And, you know, she... That's who she was going to marry. And I said, well, I'm sorry you ended up with me. <laughs> yeah, Alex P. Keaton. Yeah. I, I, I respect that crush. Yeah, that's, that <laughs> was hers. Too. We can talk later. I can, I'll give you her email. Oh, you email Molly. there you go. I, I could start stalking her now that I'm in my 40s. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's inappropriate. <laughs> well, again, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. I know with the new book, you've probably got a lot of people you, that are reaching out to chat with you guys about this. So uh, thank you for taking the time to chat with us here on the John and Heidi Show. The book is called Crush. Writers reflect on uh, love, longing, and the lasting power of their first celebrity crush. We've been visiting with uh, Kathy Alter, and she's got a co-author, Dave Singleton, that's on this as well. Kathy, thank you again for the time today. Well, thanks for having me, John. It was fun. It was fun. Thank you again. And the book is called Crush. It's available right now wherever books are sold. John and Heidi. Do you buy lottery tickets? Maybe you wait till the jackpot is big, then you buy one. I was like that too. Like my odds got better because the jackpot was more. Well, I think I found something that actually will give me a better chance to win. It's called Lotto-licious. I learned about this from Richard Lustig. He literally wrote the book on how to win the lottery, and he should know. He's a seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Richard plays and endorses Lotto-licious, and I just signed up too. I'd love it if you joined Richard and I. You can play Powerball and Mega Millions without even going to the store. Sign up right now at RadioLottoPool.com. John and Heidi. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Did you know that there are mirrors on the moon? I did not. Astronauts left mirrors there so we could shoot a laser beam to bounce back to Earth, and it'll give us the distance of the moon, and it'll it'll help within a matter of seconds. They can measure the distance to make sure the moon didn't move on us. Uh-oh. Fun fact for you, Heidi. <laughs> What's that, John? The volcano Krak- Krakatoa near Java when it exploded in 1883, it was so loud people in North America could hear it. Oh. So that's pretty cool. That's crazy. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Australia's national anthem is called Advance Australia Fair. That's the name of their national anthem. Uh, mm. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Sanskrit is considered the mother of all higher languages. And what that's is what they Sanskrit? use. It's a type of language, and it's used quite often in computer software, but it's a language. So. Really? Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The Brady Bunch. You know where they lived? I have their address. It was 4222 Clinton Way. I don't know what the city was, but we talked earlier about where the Tanners lived, so it's kind of neat that we got the very much. And speaking of homes, <laughs> yes. uh, a final fun fact for you, the Buckingham Palace has over 600 rooms. Did you know that? That's crazy. That's a lot of rooms. So there you go. That's some fun facts on a Monday. Whether you're an experienced shooter or someone new to self-defense, Front Sight Firearms Training Institute has a course for you. You may recognize Front Sight from their reality TV show filmed at this private range 45 minutes west of Las Vegas. A Diamond Lifetime membership is $15,000, but we have a special price of just $3,000 available now only at radiosavings.com. This lifetime membership allows you to take over 50 courses as often as you'd like at Front Sight Firearms Training Institute. Get this deal right now at radiosavings.com. 
Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on this Monday. Ibuprofen may be the best thing to treat your child's fever. A new clinical trial has found that the best method of treating a child's fever is to start with ibuprofen alone and then using acetaminophen, if I said any of that right, plus ibuprofen. So they'll add the two together. Ibuprofen is the ingredient in brand names like Advil or Motrin, while acetaminophen, am I saying that right? I, I'm sure you are. It, that's what you find in Tylenol. Researchers at the University of Bristol, and uh, that's in the United Kingdom, said doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and patients wanting to use medicines to treat young, unwell children with fevers should be advised to use ibuprofen first and then to consider the relative benefits and risks of u- using acetaminophen plus ibuprofen over a 24-hour period. The thing that's amazing to me, why can't they make the names of drugs a little easier to say? They would make them less scary. <laughs> I mean, call them things that people can pronounce. Acetaminophen, really? Or however I said it before, I think I got it right that time. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, and we were just watching television the other day. And I got to say this. For five years, we had a DVR. We never watched commercials. I mean, never. So we're without a DVR right now. Uh, we're going to have one again here soon. But right now, we're watching commercials. And first of all, <laughs> I wish I had a nickel for every time I grab my remote and tried to fast forward through the ads that I can't fast forward through. That's funny. But we were watching a commercial for some sort of medication. It was about four seconds worth of medication, and then it was about 56 seconds worth of all, all the things the it's going to do to you. Yeah, the side, side effects were worse than side what Side effects they may include with. suicidal thoughts was one of them. I was like, what? I think Isn't I'll just that keep that. Isn't an antidepressant? Headache. Yeah. Side effects may include this and this and bleeding from the eyes. <laughs> your neighbors won't like you anymore. And somebody's <laughs> going to steal your parking space. Side effects may also include bad hair days. Side effects may include even worse Monday mornings. You know, I'm like listening to these side effects thinking, I'll skip the pill. I'll, I'll just keep whatever I had and start with. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi show on a Monday. Hey, this is Tim from Hope and Faith Machine Works. Are you having one of these days? How in the world am I going to do that? Or even, if I could just have this... My life would be so much easier. Well, this kind of stuff is my specialty. At Hope and Faith Machine Works, we work with anyone who needs something built, fabricated, or just done right. We've done medical, industrial, PLC, and prototype designs. You can reach us at yourhopeourfaith.com. That's yourhopeourfaith.com. The secret to having a long marriage with no arguments whatsoever. You ready for this, Heidi? There's no such thing oh, as a marriage with no it arguments happened. ever. A middle-aged married couple in China says they used to argue ferociously every day until they hit the magic recipe for a successful marriage. You know what it is? What's that? Never, ever speak to each other. <laughs> 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 that would work. <laughs> the, this is it. Seriously. For five years, they've shared the same home and the same bed, but they have not shared a single word with each other. The husband told the East Day newspaper, we have not had an argument in five years. <laughs> I think they've had an argument. It's just been a silent one it's for five years. It's been an argument that's lasted for five years. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't talked to each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh my five, god! I can't do five minutes. Well, Heidi we, gets mad. We at me. can't do that. It'd be an awfully yeah. boring morning show. We're married to, to each other, so it'd be kind of like, okay, well, we got nothing to say. <laughs> you just move on. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about robots. Apparently, they're not vegetarians. We'll tell you how I know in a bit. John and Heidi. It's interesting as I get a little bit older, and all of a sudden, you know, you see years like 2016. To me, that still sounds like the future, even though that's today. Uh, like Back to the Future, 2015 was the future. Well, that was last year. That's the past now. Well, robots, they're actually a thing now. Scientists in Florida have developed a robot that is powered by eating meat, dubbed the Choo Choo the gas, Gastrobot. A 12-wheeled, a 12-wheeled train-like robot runs on microbial fuel cell, which breaks down food with bacteria and converts it into electrical energy. Now, the cell works by producing enzymes that break down carbohydrates, releasing energy. Inventor Stuart Wilkinson of the University of South South Florida says the ideal fuel for his robot is meat. Choo-choo may be developed into a lawnmower that eats grass clippings. A similar type of robot is being made in England right now, powered by eating slugs. So here's my concern. If you make a robot that is powered by eating meat, it's only a matter of time before it starts eating people. (laughs) Doesn't that sound like a scary Stephen King kind of book? Choo Choo, the gastrobot. It's a robot that eats meat. It's a robot that you'd have to clean out the inside Mm -hmm. of that thing. Do you clean out the inside of you? I don't know. There's 
We eat meat. I'm right, just saying. But your this body is, does all of that. It's a robot. This guy so, probably figured out a way to do it. Which all I know. The interior is going to be also mm. metal. At some point, you'd have to take it apart and clean. Otherwise, you'd have rotten meat and maybe maggots. and Maybe it's plastic inside. I have no idea. All I know is we're going to talk about sunburn on the way. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This has been quite an election so far, and we've got a long ways to go. Stay informed at politicalstorm.com. It's a cool site with political news and information on the campaigns, plus a place to chime in and have a say in what you think. If you're into politics, you need to check out politicalstorm.com. Get informed from several different sources all in one place. Listen to podcasts like mine and learn about current election topics, read fun editorials, and engage your brain. It's your country. It's your vote. It's your voice. Politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. Welcome to summer. Almost everybody, almost everywhere is out of school now. There may be some people somewhere that are still doing school, but for the most part, we're pretty much done with that. So this is the time of year we roll up our sleeves, we take off our pants and put on shorts, and we go out and enjoy the sun. But if you've been in the sun too much, you might get a little bit of sunburn. Uh, and do you want to know what to do for sunburns? Sure. It says sunburn calls for a multi-step treatment. You have to deal with both the acute issue of discomfort and the potential long-term damage. This is from Susan Winkle, an, assist- uh, I'm sorry, an assistant professor of dermatology at the University of South Florida in Tampa. A couple things from them today. Hmm. Their press re- release department's been busy. Uh, this one says you apply a damp compress made from clean cloth soaked in a mixture of two teaspoons of baking soda and two cups of cool water, and that'll help. And it says once... Uh, or place chilled used tea bags, if you want to do that instead, on the affected skin. Do this for about five minutes. The tannis in the tea will relieve the sting. Now, to prevent or lessen peeling with an uh, emollient, whatever that is, such as aquaphor, I don't know what that is either, <laughs> contains 41% petroleum jelly and holds in moisture. It says, or you could use aloe vera gel, which I've heard that. That's oh, a pretty yeah. common one. And that helps prevent peeling as well. And uh, it takes away the sting. Apply that to your damp skin. If you have blisters that form, try not to pop them. They serve as a little tent that holds in hot fluids, uh, and that helps uh, keep bacteria out. If a blister ruptures, cover that area with an antibiotic like a polysorpin. I'm going to post all of this on Facebook because I'm pretty sure if that is something that you care about, you probably didn't get a lot from my reading of it. (laughs) I didn't know what most of those words were. Did you? I knew what most of those words did, were. Did I say any of them right? You, you did all right. <laughs> okay. You did you can, okay. You can learn more at Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news. And I have two good news stories, and I'm going to probably only get to one of them. So I'll probably have to hold this one off until tomorrow. I guess we'll see. But the first one is, have you ever heard of the Heimlich Maneuver? Oh, yeah. Uh, You know who invented it? Mr. Heimlich. Dr. Henry Heimlich. And he is now 96. He's retired. And he invented the Heimlich Maneuver. And he got to use it for the first time ever at his senior living center. He was in the dining room in Dupree House in Cincinnati, where he lives. 87-year-old female that was next to him was chewing on a cheeseburger, and she started choking. Dr. Henry Heimlich gave her the Heimlich maneuver and dislodged the, the hamburger and saved her life. How would he have invented it if he had never had the privilege but of using it? He's used it, but he never used it to save someone's life. Oh. You know, he came up with a theory, this is how you would do this, but he'd never had to use it. He said in an interview, this was the first time I've ever used this maneuver to save someone's life. Well, that's very I think cool. That's cool. And I've I had do, to use it. You have on our son. He yep. yacked up a uh, Werther's original, <laughs> I think, a couple times. Hey, uh, I, I have time for this one, too. Last month, 89-year-old Herminia Hirsch stood on a baseball field in front of a microphone. Less than two minutes later, she finally fulfilled a lifelong wish. She's 89 and a Holocaust survivor, oh. and she sang the national anthem before oh. the Detroit Tigers took the Tampa Bay Rays on May 21st. 
89-year-old, was born in Czechoslovakia, has dreamed of singing the patriotic tune at a Major League Baseball game, and she finally had a chance to do it. And you can see some of the performance. I'll throw a link to that online as well. Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Now, there are some things I post on there that we don't talk about on the radio. So if you're not a fan on Facebook right now, you should become one. Uh, it's really easy. Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. We put all kinds of fun stuff on there, and, and you can chime in and, and share things too. But I always try to find uplifting, happy things mm -hmm. because there's enough negativity out there. Oh, absolutely. All right. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Monday. Time now for the bonus break. Only available here on the John and Heidi Show podcast. And your bonus break is brought to you by winthisonline.com, where the winning is just the beginning. Check it out today. It's free to sign up at winthisonline.com. A recent poll shows that inactivity is kids' biggest health problem. So I agree. kids just sitting around. So how do you fix that? By just Make a move. Quit sitting around. That's how. Is eating organic food, which costs more, really better for me? Stanford University doctors dug through reams of research to find out. They concluded there's little evidence that going organic is healthier, citing yeah. only, only a few differences involving pesticides and antibiotics. Eating organic fruits and veggies can lower exposure to pesticides, including for children, but the amount measured from conventionally grown produce was within safety limits. Nor did the organic foods prove more nutritious, by the way. So saying, if you like organic, that's fine. Just don't tell me that it's better for you because they just proved that it's really not. Right, and I know many farmers <laughs> that have all said that Organic foods are the biggest. Well, it's they're biggest a lot more expensive. Rip off ever perpetrated on to the American people because oh, the biggest I don't know about the biggest. That's what they're saying because you don't need them, and right. people are paying almost double. Yeah, for something that says organic when there is really no Not a difference, big difference at all. Well, according to that study, hardly any. Hey, secondhand smoke kills more than six hundred thousand people worldwide every year, according to a recent study. In the first look at global impact of secondhand smoke, researchers analyzed data from the last 100 or from the last year rather for 192 countries. There's that many countries? You only hear of about the same 20 or 30 every year. <laughs> I knew there were other countries. Anyway, they found that 40% of children and more than 30% of non-smoking men and women regularly breathe in secondhand smoke. So children, 40% of non-smoking children. <laughs> I think that's all of them. Breathe in secondhand smoke, but only 30% of non smoking men and women. Why are kids? Oh, I suppose because they probably because live with Adults parents. can choose where <clears throat> they're going and children go. cannot. Yeah, that's probably why. Hey, moving on with our bonus break here. Researchers in Italy say that heavy drinking may lead to liver disease. Really? <laughs> Boy, you guys just figured that out. In I Italy? am so glad they did uh, that study. Um, yeah, me too. Thanks, researchers in Italy. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Two men robbed a convenience store in a Michigan suburb. On their way out of the store, they ran into each other. One man's gun went off and it struck the other man in the leg. Oh no! The uninjured robber thought, uh, though, continued to make his escape until that is the, the first robber, now on the ground bleeding from the gunshot, decided he wasn't going to let his partner in crime leave behind. <laughs> He pulled his he gun. Him. He pulled his gun and shot his partner in the other leg. I would have too. It's like, leaving, listen here, you jerk! You leaving, just shot me. You're gonna leave me here. Both men on the ground with gunshot wounds, uh, giving to each other by each other. Following this so far, both men survived. The take was less than fifty bucks, <laughs> but because it was armed robbery and the shots were actually fired, causing injury, they each received very long prison terms. So. That's that is awesome. Uh, how do you follow that up? I'll tell you how <laughs> with this one final story I happen to have. A man in South Carolina robbed a restaurant by writing a, no a note demanding the cashier give him all the money in her cash drawer. The cashier complied and the robber made his getaway. But our criminal mastermind made a mistake. Guess what he wrote the note on? On his, the back of one of his, his checks. His deposit slip? Yeah, his, his check. Oh, funny. Uh, police arrested him at home about an hour after he got there. His name and address and everything was right there, right Makes there on his chat. pretty cat. easy. Yeah, not the smartest dude. So that's your bonus break. <laughs> Brought to you by winthisonline.com, where the winning is just the beginning.